Hey guys, today we're working on a Lund 1825 Pearl Guide Tiller boat. Great multi-species boat, uh, small enough to dump into smaller lakes and big enough to handle big water. We're going to be repowering this boat with Minn Kota's flagship bow mount, the Minn Kota Tarova with iPilot Link. Uh, great motors, been around since 2007, uh, and they introduced Spotlock, which is an electronic anchor. In 2017, they redesigned that for Tarova Bluetooth model, which incorporated the jog feature with the Spotlock, as well as some more, some more options with their iPilot Link ability. So we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna unbox this motor and we'll take you step by step on how to install it on a boat. As we open the box, you'll find a number of parts and pieces in here. In the box, we got a heading sensor, we got a prop, we got a 30 foot ethernet extension cable, the remote control, the foot pedal, and also in the packaging, we have our owner's manual, mounting hardware, a charging cord, and a lanyard. We'll go ahead and open that up and lay it out on the boat and you'll be able to see what's all in this bag. There's your owner's manual. There's also a waterproof quick reference iPilot link remote control reference. You can put in the boat and uh, reference that if you need to. We got our mounting hardware. We have a power adapter plug. We have a charging cord for the remote. We got some more mounting hardware. We got a lanyard for the remote. Then we have a number of little rubber plugs. And I, of, I often get asked, what are those plugs for? If you look at the bottom of the foot pedal, there's some slotted grooves in the bottom. This boat has carpet on the deck, so we really wouldn't use them in this instance. But if you have a fiberglass deck, that's where these plugs come into handy. It keeps the foot pedal from sliding around. Always in the installation, it's, it's a good idea to refer to your owner's manual. Right in the beginning of the owner's manual, you'll see the tools and resources required to do this installation. I'll just read them off for you quick. You need a number three Phillips screwdriver. You need a drill. You need a 9 32nd drill bit. You need a 7 16 box end wrench. Always a good idea to have a second person to help you with the installation. It is a heavier motor. In this installation process, we're going to be utilizing the optional MKA32 Minn Kota quick release bracket. What that allows us to do is securely fasten the motor to the bow of the boat, but then if we decide to pull the motor off, if it interferes with our boat cover, if, it, uh, if we're going out on the lake just uh, tubing or doing some water sports fun, we can take the motor off, or if we need to bring the motor in for service, it's as easy as pulling a pin, pin flipping the lever, and taking the motor off. On the back of the box, you'll see all the motors that's compatible with this quick release bracket, from Altera all the way down to the Power Drive pontoon model. There is another version of the quick release bracket. It's the MKA16-3 by Minn Kota. That'll also fit all five of these models of motors. The difference between that is that's a two-piece slide plate. So one, the base will be mounted to the boat, the second piece will be mounted to the motor, and it'll actually slide off. In this particular boat, there's a bow light socket which will not allow us to slide that off. That's why we're choosing to go with the MKA32 model. In the package, you'll see the base plate that's mounted to the boat, and that'll cover up any sharp corners of the base plate. Also in the box is the plate that'll mount to the bottom of the trolling motor, a bag of hardware, last but not least, your installation instructions. In the hardware pack, you're gonna see a couple different lengths of, of fasteners. We've got some longer oval head machine bolts. Then we got some shorter pan head Phillips bolts or Phillips screws. We'll use the shorter ones to attach the base of the motor to the top plate of the quick release bracket. These longer ones we're gonna set aside right now because they're gonna fasten the base plate to the front of the boat. One thing I like to do just to make sure I don't put this motor bracket, we'll call it, backwards is I'll actually set it in the quick release bracket the way it goes. We know this is gonna be facing the front of the trolling motor, so it's gonna be mounted in this orientation. So I'll go ahead and I'll just pull this off. And we'll set the boat end of it, we'll set that aside and get it out of our way. So our next step, we're gonna go ahead and take the side plates off of this Trova. 
the left and the right, and you'll see two Phillips screws. And again, that's a number three. So we'll remove these screws. Then we will remove the two on the back side. You'll see a number of holes in the base plate of the trolling motor. Those holes will correlate with the holes that are drilled and tapped or threaded into the motor plate. So one tip that I personally like to do is I like to put a little Loctite on each of the threads just to keep stuff from loosening up down the future. We're gonna go ahead and set the motor right on the motor plate and line the holes up. Little trick I like to do just to help me get everything lined up, because you have these release bars or this, this stow and deploy mechanism, I'll just grab the fastener by the bottom and kind of slide it up underneath there and pivot it, and line it up with the hole. Again, we're using a number three tip. And I'll just get everything started. I won't snug anything down yet until all six of our fasteners are started. So I have all my fasteners started in all six holes. So I'm just gonna go ahead and take our impact with our number three on it, put it in there and get everything nice and snug. All right, now that we've got the plate fastened securely to the motor, we're gonna go ahead and put our side plates back on. With our side plates reinstalled, we are now ready to take the boat base plate and we'll go ahead and mount that right to the motor. And then we'll actually lock it in place and then we're ready to set this up on the bow of the boat for proper placement. So now that we have our motor set up on the bow of our boat, we're just gonna kinda step back and just take a look at everything, the way everything's laying out on this boat. One important aspect is we wanna make sure the head of the trolling motor is inside the gunnel to protect it from catching any dock posts. The other thing to keep in mind is how far out or in should we keep this motor? If you look at the bottom of the aluminum extrusion, there's a rounded cutout. That run, rounded cutout has to be either flush or slightly past the rub rail on the boat. And the reason for that is because if you see on the bottom of this drive housing, there's a thicker portion of it where the shaft comes out, okay? If that cutout is not outside or flush with the rub rail of the boat, you won't be able to deploy your motor all the way because the bottom of the drive housing is gonna be hitting the boat. So we'll just, we'll just push it out a little bit farther. I'm slightly past the rub rail of the boat. The head of my motor is inside the gunnel. One thing to keep in mind when you're placing the motor up on the front of the boat is to inspect where's your bow roller of your trailer. Some bow rollers on boats are up higher. And if you back your boat too far in the water before you're launching it, or if you're on a steep axis, the boat will actually slide down against your bow roller. Your bow roller will come up and actually hit the skid of this trolling motor, breaking it off. So good rule of thumb is to slide it over to a point where if that bow roller would come up, you're gonna miss the front of the motor, avoiding any damage to that skid or the ramps. So we have our motor sitting up on the front of the boat and we're ready to drill holes, but the holes are covered up by everything here, so how in the heck do we mark those holes? Here's a little trick I like to do, is I'll just take a piece of blue painter's tape, and I'll just tape that to the boat right alongside the edge of the quick release bracket. Then I'll take just a marker and just put a little tick mark so I know that's the front of it. You'll remember earlier in the installation video, we had the holes on the aluminum extruded base plate on the motor. If you're not using the quick release bracket, you don't need to use the tape. You can just set the motor up in its proper position and then go ahead and mark the holes that we used to mount the motor to the quick release bracket. So we have the quick release bracket plates apart, okay? Our holes are now exposed. I'm gonna reach underneath through this access panel and I'm gonna just kind of feel what holes I can use. We wanna get at least four in there, 
Okay, four will securely fasten the motor to the boat, and I know I'll get that one. That one's free and clear, as is that one. And we got two on this side too that are free and clear. So I'll go ahead and mark those. Then we pull the base plate off, and there you can see the holes we need to drill to put the quick release base plate onto this boat. So we'll go ahead and get our 930 second drill bit and drill some holes. The mounting fasteners that came with the motor were just a panhead Phillips. We're gonna set those aside, we're not gonna use them for this installation. The mounting hardware that came with the quick release bracket is an oval head. Those are the ones we're going to use because they fit in the hole and they flush up nice. The other thing in the hardware bag were these rubber washers, a little bit thicker. If at all possible, I don't use them, but if you do need to shim things up a little bit, if you have a little bit of radius on the bow of the boat, this one's completely flat, so we won't use them. But if you do have a slight radius, it might be just using the front two or the back two. It all depends, but you want that base plate as flat as possible. In the hardware pack that came with the quick release bracket, we got our oval heads. And one thing I like to do, we got stainless fasteners and we got a stainless nylock. To prevent any gulling of the threads, I always just put a dab of anesthes on each fastener. That'll make installation a lot easier. Okay, we got our, our fasteners through the base plate. The next step I like to do is take our washers and our nylocks and get everyone started. We have everything started underneath the bow of the boat. Now we're gonna take our 7 16 box end wrench and we're gonna go ahead and snug everything up. I do like to use an impact just from using them so often over the years, I can tell when that fastener is tight. You can use just a regular socket and, an, and a screwdriver. I would not recommend just putting a, a tip into a drill. You have a tendency to strip the screw head out. With the motor off of the base plate of the quick release bracket, you know, you'll notice there's some sharp edges here. And that's where that cover comes into play. If you're gonna take your motor off, you can simply set that right on the cover, flip your lever, put the safety pin in, and now all those sharp edges on that base plate are covered up. So our base plate securely fastened to the boat. We're gonna go ahead and take the motor and we're gonna drop it on right now. That in its proper location, we're gonna flip the lever, put the safety pin in, and now our motor is securely fastened to the front of this boat. Our next step in the installation process is to go ahead and put the prop on. So with the 916 socket, I'm gonna remove the prop nut. And part of the packaging is this red washer, which we'll discard, the stainless steel washer, which we will reuse some instructions, a plastic piece, and the shear pin. So the plastic cover, the red washer, we'll discard. We'll go ahead and line up the keyway or the notch part of the prop onto the shear pin or the drive pin. We'll slide our washer on. And again, I always put a dab of anisees on the threads. Go ahead and start the prop nut, and then we'll finish it off with the socket. And you'll feel it snug up and bottom out right there. Now our prop is firmly secured onto the motor. So out of the box, every Minn Kota trolling motor has your power leads with just two ring tongues attached to it. And our next task is to get power to this trolling motor. So if you look at this boat, this boat was already equi equipped with the Minn Kota MKR25 plug-in receptacle, okay? I get a lot of calls or inquiries about, hey, I need a Minn Kota Turova plug, okay? It's, the plugs are not motor specific, they're boat specific. So if your plug would happen to have this particular receptacle on it, you're gonna to have to go to your nearest marine dealer and get the plug that'll fit the boat and then attach that to the power leads from the trolling motor. So we're gonna go ahead and do that right now. 
And we're going to start by just simply cutting off these ringtone terminals. We're going to strip back about a half inch of insulation. We're going to slide on a couple pieces of heat shrink. We're going to slide on the sleeves that come with your plug, and then we're going to insert those into these barrels. You'll notice our red one is here. We already have the set screw loosened up, so we're going to take the red or the positive lead, insert it into that barrel, and tighten up our set screw. And you do want to get a firm connection, so make sure you tighten that down. I'm even going to double check the other end. Okay, that's good and tight. So positive's done. We're going to go on and do the negative terminal. We're going to do our negative wire. Insert that into the barrel and snug it up. Okay, we're good there. Now we're just going to go ahead and slide our heat shrink over these barrels. Make sure everything that's metal is covered. And now we're just going to take a little butane torch and shrink it. You don't want to overdo it either with the heat. Let it cool down just a little bit or move it around a lot. Otherwise, you'll split that heat shrink. We got our plug fastened to the trolling motor power leads. We're going to go ahead and put it into the receptacle on the boat. We're going to hit our power button on the Trova. We have power. The next step I like to do after the motor is powered up and mounted securely to the boat is mount the heading sensor. What the heading sensor does with this particular motor is it gives us the ability to jog, which is if you're spot locked or electronic anchor, you have the ability to jog either forward, back, left or right in five foot increments. And what this does is it tells the motor what position the boat is in. This is mounted to the boat in a directional manner. If you notice on the top of the heading sensor, there's an arrow. That arrow has to be mounted parallel with the keel of the boat. The reason for that is if you're using the spot lock feature and you want to jog backwards, this tells the motor, hey, we're pointing forwards. I need to spin 180 and go back five feet and left or, left or right, same principle. So we're going to mount this probably in the back of the boat because there was already one mounted back there and the owner of the boat said the performance was good. So we're going to utilize the hole that's already drilled. If you didn't already have one of these installed on your boat, you want to mount it in a location that's at least 24 feet away from a magnetic field, a ferrous metal, anything like that that's going to give this some sort of interference. One thing I like to do is I'll run around with a compass. If I know an area that looks good to me, but I want to just double check, I'll run around with a compass. And if I'm rolling over something and I see that needle jump, I'll know that's not a good location because we're getting some magnetic interference. So then I'll just find another location in the boat. The other thing to make note of is this has to be powered, ideally on switched power, but it does turn on and off via Bluetooth communication with the trolling motor. So if your boat does not have any kind of master power switch on it, yeah, you can go ahead and hook it direct to a battery, 12 volt only, um, or ideally if you do have a master power switch, it's good to hook it up to the back side of that switch so when you do shut the power off to the boat, it also kills the power to this. The other thing that I do is I install a fuse on this because we do have live power going through this. I use a one amp fuse and a fuse holder just to protect the, the power line going to this heading sensor. Okay, this, the little bit this draws along with a number of other things that might be drawing phantom current adds up to be a lot in a hurry. So again, always a good idea to have some sort of master switch in your boat. So this is the location we decided to put our Minn Kota heading sensor free of any electrical interference, far away from ferrous metals, and then also close to a switch power supply. We already have the screws removed from this cover, so we're just gonna go ahead and lift that up and feed our wire through there.
Okay, as mentioned earlier, this is directional. You have to mount this directional, again, parallel with the keel of the boat. So we're just gonna kinda put it in place, take a step back, eyeball everything, and that kinda looks like a good location. We'll go ahead and put our screws in and fasten it down. Now that our heading sensor is securely fastened, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna string our, our power wire back to our power supply. I know there's a couple rigging holes in this particular boat, which we're gonna use. Then we'll go ahead and fasten this deck back down. So we strung the power cord for our heading sensor through the boat and we got down to the nuts and bolts of the power supply in this particular boat. So you look in here, we have a ground bus already in place, factory installed. Then we have an open switched power supply right there. So we're gonna util utilize the ground and this red switched power for our power supply. We have our fuse holder, our waterproof fuse holder with our one amp fuse already installed. We're gonna put a spade end on our negative lead. So I slide the negative down on the negative bus. Make this connection for our positive. We're gonna get a good crimp. Now we'll test it. We'll throw the power switch on to see if our light lights up. So we do have power and it will shut off right now. So our next step after we have power to our heading sensor, we need to pair the heading sensor to the trolling motor. Pairing the heading sensor to the Trova is a very simple procedure. With the power turned on, you're gonna press the sync button on the top of the heading sensor. And you're gonna see a fast blink. When that's blinking fast, you have a short amount of time you're gonna go up to the pair button on the Tarova. You're gonna press and hold that. And you're gonna hear a tone change from steady tone to three quick beeps. Now if you go back and look at the light indicator on the heading sensor, it went from a fast blink to a slow blink. Now you know they're paired. If you look in the owner's manual that came with the heading sensor, on pages eight and nine, there's two different instructions. One is for calibrating the iPilot, the other is for calibrating the iPilot link. Because this is an iPilot link motor, we're gonna be using those instructions, and that's all performed with the use of the touchscreen remote control. The remote will tell you what steps to use. To power it up, you press and hold the check button. Go through the startup prompts. And now you have full functionality of the remote control. You have touch screen and also buttons. The charging port for the remote is on the bottom. Simply pull out the waterproof plug, insert the charging cord, and the other end is USB. So any USB port or you use the power adapter that comes with it to recharge the battery on your remote control. The remote also comes with the lanyard that's installed by simply sliding it through the groove on the top here. And now you can either wear it around your neck or you remove the neck harness and now you can clip it to your belt. To turn the remote control off is the same process as turning it on. Just press and hold the check button and a pop-up window will appear saying shutting down. Now you're ready to store your remote control. So our trolling motor is mounted. We already did the heading sensor. The next step and the final step is to finish the connections of the cords coming out of the trolling motor. There's four of them. We already addressed the power cord, okay? 
there is a four pin lead coming out of the base. That's where your foot pedal plugs to. Coming down the coil cord of the motor is a 14 pin and then a smaller ethernet cord. Okay? This ethernet cord, when hooked to a compatible Hummingbird unit, gives us the iPilot link functionality. To hook that to a Hummingbird Helix, you're going to need an adapter cord. That's the ASECQDE Ethernet Adapter Dongle. That's going to simply plug in to the Ethernet cord, and then you're going to need an adapter cord for the sonar. This is a Hummingbird Helix Mega Down Imaging Unit. We have a MDI transducer, a Mega Down Imaging transducer in the lower unit of that Tarova. So to get that to work on your Helix, you're going to need the Minn Kota built-in Mega Imaging Adapter Cord, MKRMI-1. So depending on what sonar head unit you have, Minn Kota makes a wide range of adapter cords, so you can get sonar from the lower unit of the trolling motor. So making the final connections is as easy as fastening the adapter cords to the cords coming out of the trolling motor. And then you have this cable tray that's part of the Hummingbird system. So we're going to go ahead and open up the back of the cable tray. And the openings are keyed, so the MI adapter cord will only fit into one of them. And then the Ethernet adapter cord. With those in place, you can put the cover back on, reinstall your screws, plug it into the back of the Hummingbird unit, and the installation of your Minkota Tarova is now complete.